The pandemic had a far-reaching impact on parishes across the diocese. It forced a temporary halt to ordinary church life as we knew it. But there has been light and hope. During lockdown, we started to think about how to do church differently. How, once restrictions were eased, we could take what we had learned into the future. Some have begun to think about growing new expressions of church. And I want to tell you a little bit more about that today. Here in the Diocese of Oxford, we have many church members from all walks of life who have a strong sense of call to connect with people right outside the normal reach of our Sunday services so that they can grow and nurture new worshipping communities of all shapes and sizes. These are some of the inspiring stories we're about to hear. They feature members of our churches, large and small, in both rural and urban areas, where clergy and laity have been working in partnership to bring to birth new congregations of worshipping Christians. Eleven years ago, Catherine Crosley set up a cookery club for young people as part of her pioneer ministry. She talks about how from very small beginnings of a cookery club, it's flourished into worshipping communities and fresh expressions of church. So Cook at Chapel was about cooking and sharing a meal together with young people. It was never a very big fresh expression. It was always quite small. We never had more than 20 people there, but it's led to other things developing off from that. Uh, one of the things is we have an allotment where Forest Church can take place. Forest Church was something I was pioneering, but I paused it because I'd felt that what was happening was people were engaging with Forest Church, but they'd been um, maybe consuming it a bit like an after-school or children's activity. I was feeling that God was calling me to start Forest Church again. Yes, we're reaching out to families with young children, but also people who are older as well. Craftivism is about gentle activism through craft. Back in November, I think we were going into winter and our craftivist group felt that we should be doing something um, to, um, to encourage people. And so we yarn bombed a tree. We literally uh, knitted two large banners that went around the tree and then invited people in the community to add things to those knitted and crocheted banners. People added prayers and it became a real symbol of hope within the village. The craftivist group do see themselves as a church group. I've always been quite um, explicit about saying to people that this is a Christian group, it's quite overtly Christian. We have a time of prayer at the end of the meeting and we also have a Bible reflection. With Cooker Chapel, the sort of liturgy of that time of prayer evolved over time. I introduced a prayer bowl activity just for one week and I said to the young people, oh, we'll take an a ordinary mixing bowl, we'll take pieces of paper and a wooden spoon, we'll write our prayers, put them in the bowl, mix it up and pass the prayer bowl round. Well this really took off and the young people loved it and they insisted that we had that mixing bowl of prayer every week. And then they wanted to draw the prayers together at the end. So the prayer bowl would be passed around the whole group, but then one young person would bring all the prayers together at the end of that prayer session. It wasn't me um, saying to the young people, this is the way we're going to do it. It was them taking ownership of that time of prayer and sharing it and shaping it together. I think that's really, really important for fresh expressions. You're shaped by your context, you're shaped by the people who are involved because they are as much in touch with God as I am. So I would say they've got as much to bring to sort of shaping that liturgy. Well, that just goes to show that you don't have to be part of a large or well-funded church to grow a new congregation. It's really about listening to your community and responding to their needs. Let's meet another Catherine. She's the vicar at one of our smaller resourcing hubs, where lay leadership and working in partnership with other organisations has been the key to growing new worshipping communities. The community here is 
built up and grown up around the railway at Bletchley. At the moment, particularly, there's lots of growth happening, but quite a mixed sort of demographic context, particular pockets here in Water Eaton where up to 50% of children are, are living in poverty. So when you've got those kind of communities living side by side, obviously there are, um, there's a lot to take into account. I was invited to come and uh, take up the post as vicar here. We came um, to a congregation that was maybe sort of 30, 35 regular, 40 regular congregation members, and then brought um, a, a group of about 30. And that group fairly quickly felt like one church. Both had experienced a lot of change in the short space of time in terms of their experience of what church looked like and felt like. Um, but we have grown together over that time, over the three and a half years, um, and have not only grown together, but have grown in number as well. We're simply wanting to anticipate that God will grow things that are healthy. So I guess what we're trying to do is um, build our, ourselves as healthy as possible and help other people to, um, to grow in the fullness of life that God has for them. And to do that in a way that is not seeking to, to say, this is how you do it, but this is a way that we have worked out that is appropriate for our context. And that maybe you could think about doing this as well. We also have the chance of really making the most of developing our whole church in their gift, and in particular in their gift of leadership. We're really keen to not just develop those gifts, but actually see people growing and leading others in developing themselves as well. I often come back to the parable of the farmer who built bigger barns. Every time he, he harvested more grain, he just built another bigger barn. And then at the end of doing that over a course of years, he simply, <laughs> he simply drops dead at the end of it and nothing good has come of it. So the challenge for me is don't just build a bigger barn. The challenge is give away what you have and share it so that others can grow and experience all the grace and the generosity that God has for us. Now, a common misconception about growing new congregations is that you've got to be from a particular tradition of church. So let's hear from Father Toby Wright, the rector of an Anglo-Catholic parish in the rural deanery of Whitney. I believe really passionately that, that every church is a fresh expression and every church was once a church plant. So none of our churches were there originally. Um, they've all come into being because people caught a vision and a vision to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to other people. And I think this is a really simple way of inviting us in our generation to proclaim afresh the good news of Jesus Christ and to draw other people into a living relationship with God. A greenhouse is, is a gathering together of people who are wanting to build mission communities. And uh, they, they work together in cooperation. They come together and they get resourced, they get trained, and they get ongoing support as they go through this process. So there's a constant... Uh, um, repetition of learning and practice um, and it really is a cycle so it, it's just like a greenhouse would operate in your garden um, there's all sorts of things happening people come together and new things are birthed so the Whitney greenhouse is at its very early stages at the moment um, we are expecting about three and a half thousand new homes within Whitney and in one area of that on Windrush Place um, there'll be about 1,200 homes. They're building a new school there, which is a Church of England school. And we're planning to set up a team of people who will look at building a new community of faith in a brand new part of our benefice. One of the great things about the Greenhouse Project is that it's really simple. Um, there's been some analysis done, and the average core team for a greenhouse is four people. So if there are four people in your church, that could be the start of a Greenhouse Project. There are a lot of people who think that mission is a bit like marzipan on the top of the cake, that once you've got the whole substance of the cake underneath, that if you have the time and the energy, you can then put the topping on the top of the cake. And this initiative of Greenhouse invites each one of us to think how can we grow in fresh ways and how can we be a part of God's plan.
We hope that every deanery will be inspired to start their own greenhouse in due course. It's pretty clear that growing new expressions of church works for every context and location. You don't have to be from a particular tradition of church. You don't need to be a member of clergy or consider yourself a pioneer to step in. This can work for everyone. And because there is a lot of variety, what God brings into birth doesn't all look the same. And that's what makes it so exciting. I hope that this film has inspired you to think about growing new worshipping communities where you are. And if you have the seed of an idea to inspire growth or change or a mission initiative that needs support to flourish into a new worshipping community, then please talk to us and reach out to other parishes too. We'll be there to support you every step of the way. God is right in the middle of anything that seeks to build the kingdom of God and, and serve the common good. When I'm listening to what God's saying, Pioneer Ministry is blessed and it develops. God's absolutely at the heart of this. Um, I, I think there'll be such excitement in heaven at the moment. <laughs>